Hello and welcome to another video in our fibers and fabric series. Today we're going to talk about synthetic fibers. Now I would advise you to watch our other videos first, our intro into fibers and fabrics and then our fabric construction methods, um, but it is your choice. Let's have a look. So what is a synthetic fiber? Let's have a look. Synthetic fibers are made from petrochemicals. Now petrochemicals are made from fossil fuels and um, are often made from things like coal, uh, or oil. They're hydrophobic, which means that they're water resistant. They promote settling. Um, they're heat sensitive. They may pill. Uh, many do. Um, uh, they're often very wrinkle resistant because of the way they're produced. They're produced using synthetic means, so they're often um, spun or squirted. You know, think of the way water comes out of the end of a, a, a spray bottle, for example. Um, and they have significant environmental impact, both in pre-production for the mining, their usage um, with microplastics, and then in their disposal. Here are some common synthetic fibers. First of all, we have acrylic, and notice um, how that looks very much like wool, and we'll talk about that in a second. We have some nylon, you can see it's much looser there. Uh, polyester, again, very fluffy. Uh, and elastin, fluffy even more. Of course I'll tell you more. That's why you're here. Let's talk about acrylic. All right, acrylic fibers are produced from acrylonitrile. It's a petrochemical liquid. They're unique among synthetic fibers due to an uneven surface. And this gives it a bit of a wall-like quality. And you can see here those little spots on the surface, the little spots and the little lines, they give it a bit of an uneven quality. Very much wool-like, but not um, as scaly as wool. It's soft and warm, it's designed to make wool. It's very breathable because of these properties. It's resistant to moths and to sunlight, that's po a positive. Acrylic is soft and warm. Uh, it's very breathable. It's resistant to moths and UV light, uh, but it is heat sensitive. Next up, we have nylon. You can see from this guy's fancy shirt that nylon was very popular in the 1970s. If we take a look at the microscopic image, you can see it almost looks semi-transparent, a bit like glass. This makes it easy uh, to color. Nylon fibers made from the polymerization of an uh, amine and an acid chloride. Uh, the term nylon refers to a family of polymers called linear polymides. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying it's uh, made from a mixture of a range of different chemicals all uh, mixed in together. Now, material science in itself is a very exciting field and worth exploring if that's something you're interested in. Nylon is very, very strong. It's very hydrophobic, which means that re uh, it is very water resistant. Uh, it can be very lustrous. And you can see that kind of glass-like um, texture in the microscopic image there. It's very abrasion resistant. You can see that because the surface area of the fiber itself is very smooth. So there's nothing really um, for whatever's abrading it to kind of uh, connect to. And it dries very quickly, again, because of a very smooth surface area. But nylon is very heat sensitive, um, so it will melt fairly quickly because, again, it is plastic. If you've ever had a, uh, an item of clothing that you've ironed and ended up with a shiny spot, um, that might be uh, because of our friend nylon. Now let's take a look at another popular one, polyester. What a phenomenal shell suit there. I don't think shell suits ever went out of fashion. I think they look very jazzy, these ones especially. You know, they hide a multitude of sins, they're wiped clean, what else do you need? So polyester is the most common fiber in the fashion industry. It overtook cotton um, several years ago to become the most uh, commonly produced fiber. And you can see here very smooth, very elongated fibers. The most common uh, polyester for fiber purposes is polyethylene uh, terephthalate or PET. And you'll see it's the same um, polymer, the same plastic used in many soft drink bottles. Um, so it's becoming increasingly common to remelt PET and extrude it as fiber for textiles. So you'll see often, um, you know, recycled polyester, it might be called, um, and it may be made from things like drink bottles. Uh, Polyester retains heat set pleats and creases, which makes it um, very good for things that require um, you know, heat setting. Now what that really does is it changes the thermoplastic nature of the fiber itself when you heat set a, a pleat into some polyester. So actually you're changing the fiber itself and that's what creates those pleats. 
It dries very, very quickly, it blends with other fibres and is very wrinkle resistant. So often you'll see it combined with natural fibre, like cotton for example. Cotton poly blends uh, are very, very common. So you have the breathability of the cotton plus the wearability, you know, being able to dry quickly, uh, wrinkle resistance of the polyester. It has very high abrasion resistance. Again, you can see that smooth surface there. Uh, but it absorbs oily, it absorbs, <coughs> but it absorbs um, oily stains. Polyester absorbs oily stains, has low heat resistance and does not breathe, uh, which means that you get very sweaty inside these shell suits, which is perfect for a workout in 1987. Lastly, in our top four, we have elastin. And you can see here in the microscopic image that it's made up of a range of very, very, very thin fibers. Elastin is made from at least 85% polyurethane uh, by weight and has many different trade names. Things like spandex, lycra, numa, spandel, and virin um, are names for elastin-based fabrics. It can be repeatedly stretched more than 500 times without breaking and still cover uh, its original strength and shape. It's stronger and more durable and it has a higher reaction uh, a retraction rate, sorry, uh, than uh, natural rubber. So it makes it perfect for many, many different applications, specifically clothing. It's very resistant to body oils, so great for things that are worn very close to the body. Uh, unfortunately, elastin can be easily damaged by chlorine, salt, and ultraviolet light. Now, this is ironic, given that uh, we have an image here of Elmer Furston in the 1980s wearing an elastin-based swimsuit, and you'll find that swimsuits, even today, um, and many items of clothing designed specifically to be worn in the water and out in the sunshine have less than them. That's why you'll see uh, swimsuits gradually losing their stretch over time because the elastin fiber breaks down and they stop being uh, stretchy. Here is a range of other synthetic fibers. We have triacetate, we have modacrylic, we have Kevlar, we have neoprene, we have uh, Gore-Tex, Lurex and Glomesh check them out. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Um, Jojo Siwa told me that I should say that at the end of uh, every video. Um, if you don't, that's fine. Follow us on Instagram or don't. Just enjoy these videos. Thanks very much.